Hi everyone, thank you for joining me. I appreciate you including me on your healing journey. Today I'm gonna to be talking about some different types of negative controlling patterns parents use on their child and how that can affect them in adulthood. If you like my content, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. One method of control is called active or overt, which includes physical force, yelling, invading privacy, intimidation, threats, or restriction of movement. Healthy discipline is important when raising a child. It's when the parent takes it too far that they become controlling, also known as behavioral control. These parents discipline their child's behavior. They oversee their whereabouts and social life, sometimes not being allowed to have a social life. This negative form of control regulates and monitors the child's behavior to the point of interfering with the child's ability to become independent and the ability to develop their sense of personal identity. The child feels pressure to comply to the parental authority. Studies show that emotional problems are common when stemming from controlling parents. A second type of control is called passive or covert, which is manipulation, guilt tripping, shaming, playing the victim, and so on. These parents tend to invalidate the child's emotions, limiting their thoughts and feelings. This looks like withdrawing love, shaming, guilting, disapproval to get the child to act the way they want them to. The parent thinks they are always right and the child is always wrong, which is oppressive and devalues the child. The child will feel that the parent is overproductive, possessive, and suffocating. These parents lack empathy for the child. Right now, you may be realizing that you grew up with both of these patterns in your household. These parents are called the authoritarian parents. These parents focus more on control, obedience, and discipline rather than nurturing the child. In these situations, children are looked at as having their place. They are expected to do what they are told without negotiating, communicating, or setting principles that, uh, that apply to all the family members. If the child speaks up or asks why, they are told, don't argue with me, do what you're told. I'm the parent, I know what's right and wrong, and you will listen. There isn't space for the child to have their own thoughts and feelings. The child isn't seen as an equal individual in the family unit. They are usually seen as a lower ranking, inferior, or subordinate. The impact from this control can leave the child with feelings of unworthiness and low self-esteem, which follows them into adulthood. When these children grow up to live on their own away from the parent, they are still more likely to suffer from mental health issues such as depression, anxiety, antisocial behavior, and drug use. It can look like having a low tolerance for stressful situations, lack of understanding how to set healthy boundaries, ability to communicate effectively, emotionally apprehensive, codependency, low self-esteem, self-criticism, aggressive behavior, a negative self-image, and high levels of stress leading to unhealthy relationships. If you believe that the people who brought you into this world, the people who are supposed to love you more than anybody else, don't value you, then it can be easy to believe that others won't be able to find worth in you either, which sets you up for unhealthy relationships, self-sabotaging and self-criticizing. Susan Forward says it beautifully. She says, most adult children of toxic parents grow up feeling tremendous confusion about what love means and how it's supposed to feel. Their parents did extremely unloving things to them in the name of love. They came to understand love as something chaotic, dramatic, confusing, and often painful, something they had to give up their own dreams and desires for. Obviously, that's not what love is about. Loving behavior doesn't grind you down, keep you off balance, or create feelings of self-hatred. Love doesn't hurt, it feels good. Loving behavior nourishes your emotional well-being. When someone is being loving to you, you feel accepted, cared for, valued, and respected. Genuine love creates feelings of warmth, pleasure, safety, stability, and inner peace. Again, that was by Susan Forward. Give yourself compassion around this. The people that raised you didn't know what they were doing, struggling from their own trauma, and you had to survive. Some ways to help you heal from unhealthy controlling parents is to be able to see it for what it is, 
recognizing it and where it came from can provide relief and empower you. Your pain is valid and worthy of healing. Doing inner child work, giving your inner child the love they didn't receive when they needed it, the self-care to be loving to yourself, wanting to heal this part of you, finding a therapist who will support you. You can say positive affirmations like, I know who I am, I love who I am, I like what I do, and I like how I do it, and I like my mistakes, and I like the way I learn, and I like the pace in which I learn my mistakes. I don't want to be anybody else but me. And by knowing this, I want to continue to figure out who I am. Holding unconditional love and acceptance for yourself and bringing your awareness to these parts of you, catching yourself attached to negative thoughts, you'll be able to see it for what it is and find ways to stand up for yourself. Learn how to trust yourself making decisions. You'll be able to find healthier ways to communicate to the people you love. Learn how to set healthy boundaries. Finding forgiveness. You are the person you've been looking for. I hope this helps. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to like, like and subscribe. I love you all.